What's up guys, it's your boy Darshkin, and today we're going to be talking about Albedo. Now, the reason why we're going to be talking about Albedo is because I made a video a couple days ago or whatever on them, and a lot of people were actually in the comment section talking about something that's pretty interesting, and I've talked about this multiple times, but I've never made a video about it. So I wanted to do that now. So what they were talking about is, basically, should you be going uh, crit damage on Albedo's headpiece, or should you be going defense percent, right? That's been like the, the biggest debate I've seen about Albedo. Now, obviously, we're talking about C0 because if we are talking about constellations, I'm pretty sure a C2 gives defense scaling on his ultimate or whatever. So, obviously, we're talking about C0 Albedo, right? If, that's, if you're a whale and you, you got dupes or whatever, hey, go crazy. Do what you want. Anyway, so about... Uh, the headpiece. Should you go defense percent main stat or should you go crit damage main stat? Which one is the better one? What is the takeaway? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and what are the variations as well? I want to talk about that as well. So, um, starting off, the first variation would be to go defense percent on the headpiece. Uh, so now you are running defense percent here, geo damage, and then defense here. I don't think there's anyone running triple defense. If you're running triple defense, I don't know. I'm like geo damage scales harder than defense, so yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there's that, and then you run the Harbinger of Dawn weapon. Now, the reason why you run Harbinger of Dawn is simply because you're not running a crit damage headpiece, so you are going to be missing out on a lot of crit damage. Well, with with you know running Harbinger of Dawn, you're getting a lot of that crit damage back, and you're getting crit rate. And since you're only going to be using his E ability, he is going to stay above 90% at pretty much all time. There's almost going to be no time that he's not above 90%. Like, all you're doing is switching in, pop his E, switch him out. That's it. And the E lasts for, what, 30 seconds? So by the time the E disappears, the fight will be over. So that is the first variation of uh, Albedo and what you do. So defense, headpiece, defense, uh, hourglass. Geo Damage Cup with Harbinger of Dawn. Now, the second one that a lot of people do, or, you know, some people do, I don't know how many, right, would be to go Crit Damage Headpiece. And the reason why you would go Crit Damage Headpiece, because the E scales off of defense, right? I get it. But the reason why you would go Crit Damage Headpiece, which would net you less damage on your E ability, but it nets you more damage on your ultimate. And the reason why I say that is because crit damage scales into everything. Anything that has damage, crit damage scales into. But with Albedo, defense only scales into his E ability. Not even the E drop. It only scales into the transient blossom. So people running Albedo as a character that only uses his skill, right, his E ability, you drop his E, you switch out, and Albedo never sees the light of day again. Running the defense is perfectly fine. Uh, a lot of people were using Festering Desire, which would give you increased damage and everything like that. But they've come to find out that Harbinger of Dawn seems to be the best thing for him. But that's only if you are only using his E ability. In the scenario of me or a lot of people who have Zhongli, Zhongli is going to generate a lot of energy and Albedo is also going to generate a lot of energy. Between Zhongli's pillars, right? Because now that his shield drops a pillar, that is going to be energy. Whenever Zhongli uses his ultimate, he's going to kill enemies, number one. He will um, create some orbs as well. So all of that, factoring it, you know, off of that. And then if you go look at his uh, ultimate ability, it's 40 energy cost. So he's going to have his ult quite a lot. Well, Albedo's ult is also 40 energy cost. So pretty much you can ult non-stop. Back to back to back to back to back. Albedo, Zhongli, Albedo, Zhongli. So, if you're running a comp like that, where it's pretty much ult spam, uh, running crit damage is going to be a lot more beneficial for Albedo on his headpiece than defense will, right? As you can see, as you can see right here, I have 1,900 defense, and I only have one defensive artifact, which is the, this right here. Now, imagine... If I switch this, which has no defense sub on it, 
if I switch this to defense, my defense is going upwards of what? 2100, 2200, maybe 2300. It's going to be really high. So, uh, long story short, the biggest difference between what you should be running is, uh, is Albedo purely used only for his E ability or are you running Albedo in an alt spam type of comp? Because that's exactly what my ult, my, my, you know, comp is. You know, you, you switch to Venti, you pop his ult, you switch to Zhongli, you pop his ult, you switch to Albedo, you drop his E, you pop his ult, the Fatal Blossoms proc and everything like that. Because keep in mind, the drop E does not scale off defense, the ult damage doesn't scale off defense, and the Fatal Blossoms don't scale off defense. So, you're going to be having a lot of different things not scaling off defense for you to be running all defense if you're using his ultimate ability. Now, I do want to talk about Harbinger of Dawn again. Harbinger of Dawn, you um, you pretty much can't use any other weapon if you are running um, defense on the headpiece because you need the crit damage and the crit rate. But if you are running a weapon like, even if you're running like a weapon like Black Sword, which you probably wouldn't because the crit rates are not even that high, but um, more so a weapon like Primordial Jade Cutter giving you like a super big amount of crit rate over a uh, harbinger of dawn then running crit damage headpiece is perfectly fine but if let's say i was running this crit rate with defense percent i'd be missing out on what my, my crit damage will go down to 90 percent because what crit the crit headpiece is 60 and then you obviously subtract so that's why you would run harbinger of dawn with defense percent uh headpiece and vice versa, if you're running crit damage headpiece, you can opt for a crit rate weapon uh, or something like that. Now, you can obviously still use Harbinger of Dawn with the crit damage headpiece. That's perfectly fine. All right? You look right here. Now, as you can see, the crit rate right here has gone down. So, what you tend to do is switch this to a crit rate headpiece instead of crit damage. So, that'll even out the stats, right? Now, it's 50, 141, as you can see right there. Now, like I said, it's obviously about min-maxing. I don't have um, above 90% HP right now, or my crit rate would be, what, about 78%. So it, it does even out, you know, if you, if you do it whichever way. So uh, just to summarize everything I've just said for anyone that, you know, zoned out or didn't pay attention or didn't hear it. Um, if you are running him with a defense percent headpiece, Harbinger of Dawn is going to be the best case scenario for you. Uh, you're probably not going to be ulting with him at all. He's probably ran on a team that can't give him any energy. He's never going to see the light of day outside of using his E. Now, if you're running an ult spam comp, especially with Zhong Li, and they can basically get energy off of each other, then running crit damage headpiece is going to be better. So, for anyone that didn't know the difference or didn't know which was better, there you go. So, anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Be sure to give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Comment down below. Tell me what you guys see in the comment section. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.